Hey, this is Kevin with AGL, and today we're going to be talking about lithium polymer batteries, otherwise known as LiPos. Uh, we're going to be talking about some of the formulas to help you calculate the best battery for your rig and your flying style. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the C rating versus the, the, the charge C rating versus the discharge C rating, because that confuses some people. And we're also going to be talking about battery grades. Uh, so we're going to be comparing some of these lower grade batteries like the Nanotech, the Zippies, to a much higher grade, much more expensive battery like the Maxamps here. We're also going to be talking a little bit about uh, stepping up your voltage to try and increase your flight time. You can, with multi-rotors and with airplanes, uh, a lot of people they'll pick a voltage and they'll stick with it, but uh, as you'll see later on, uh, we're going to take a, a Tero 650 equipped with some low KV motors, we're going to fly it on two different four cells, and then we're going to step it up to six cell with the exact same motors, props, and everything, so you can see the increase in the flight time and the performance from that. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll have all these formulas and things like that, specs for the batteries, the aircraft, all that listed in the description, and we'll be right back. Here we have a few examples ranging from this very standard 2200 milliamp 3 cell to a very large 16,000 milliamp tattoo 6 cell. If you've been on Hobby King's website recently, you may have noticed that this same 2200 milliamp 3 cell comes in a variety of C ratings. Why and what does that all mean? Well, the first thing you're probably going to notice is that the price goes up with the increase in C rating. The next thing you may notice is that the weight of the battery actually goes up with the increase in C rating. So we're going to talk about why all this occurs. The first we'll cover the issue of weight because it is the simplest concept. You want the lightest battery you can fly, right? Well, as long as it doesn't negatively affect your center of gravity. If my batteries are lighter though, then I can possibly increase the milliamps giving me more flight time. So lighter battery equals more milliamp, gives you more flight time, or you can simply decrease the weight that your rig is carrying, possibly giving you more flight time as well. So we have these two batteries here. We have a very standard Turnigy 2200 milliamp 3 cell with a 40 to 50 C discharge rate. We weigh this guy up, we get 198 grams. This is a multi-star 3000 milliamp, but it's only a, has a 10 C discharge rate. So our discharge rate is dramatically lower, but our milliamps are increased by 800. We weigh this guy, and we're saving 10 grams. So we're saving a little bit of weight, but more importantly, we're getting 800 more milliamps a possible flight time out of this guy as opposed to the one with a 40 to 50 C discharge rate. So C ratings. We're going to start out with the discharge C ratings. What most people have heard about the C rating as being thought of like a water hose. The bigger the water hose, the more water can flow through it. Meaning the larger the C rating, the more power can travel through the battery, which is accurate. But how to determine how big a water hose or C rating do you need? Well, let's start with a really simple formula to help us determine the potential constant amp draw of a particular battery. Now, we'll be saying potential a lot during this video because we'll be talking about the battery's advertised performance compared to its actual performance. So, best case scenario with potential. Anyway, the formula. To determine the potential constant amp draw of a battery, you take the advertised C rating of this 5000 milliamp Zippy Compact, which is 25, and multiply that by the amp hour, which is 5. 5000 milliamps equals 5 amp hour. You get a potential constant amp draw of this battery of 125 amps. That's a lot. But again, we're talking about the battery's potential. So, if we know that our rig, plane, quad, heli, what have you, flies at about 20 amps most of the time, then we are perfectly safe with a 25C battery, if we're talking about this 5000 milliamp. Instead of a much higher rated battery like this Max Amp, which is rated at 120 Cs. However, as the milliamps drop, say 5000 to 2200, so does the potential constant amp draw of your battery. So for the guys using the smaller 2200 milliamp batteries like this, it becomes more of an issue because 
if you overwork the battery, it's going to get hot, puffed, and damage the cells. So if we have a small quad flying this 2200 milliamp 3 cell that is only rated for 25C, we get a potential constant amp draw of 55. So if your quad is drawing anywhere near that, then you need a larger C rated battery. Uh, there are other things to consider like the internal resistance, but we aren't going to get that in depth. Basically, the gist of it is C rating time amp hour equals the potential constant amp draw of any particular battery. Now, if we go up in our milliamps, we can decrease our C rating. Thus, for the guys flying the larger multi rotors with batteries like this, 16,000 milliamp 6 cell, you can decrease your C rating. So for this battery we have a C rating of 15 amps and uh, milliamps of 16,000. So we have 16 amp hours of battery here. We get a potential constant amp draw of 240 amps. Now I don't have anything in my fleet that would draw near that. So this battery is never going to get a workout on any of my rigs. And even though we're, our examples have different cell counts, that really doesn't matter for this formula. Basically, it doesn't matter your cell count. All you need to do is take your, your C rating times your amp hour, and that gives you your, your potential constant amp draw for any particular battery. So while we're talking about C ratings, let's touch on charging C ratings for just a moment. Now when shopping for batteries we have learned about the potential discharge C rate, but what about the potential charging C rate? So the charging C rate is of course how quickly we can charge our batteries and get back in the air. Now lots and lots of people have opinions on why you should never charge above a 1C rate, but we're not talking about opinions, we are talking about the factory advertised rates for these batteries. So think of the charge rates like this, if my 2200 milliamp 3 cell has a 1C charge rate and I plug it into the charger I can charge this battery at 2.2 amps. So you see this one above. Uh, if it has a 2C charge rate then I can charge it at 4.4 amps so we're doubling the milliamps and that's how we're getting our amp uh, input and you can see here we have 4.4 amps. These are both three cells. Uh, this gets interesting when you go to the airfield and you see the big heli guys charging their batteries at 20 amps. Well those are probably 5,000 milliamp 6 cells uh, with a 5C or better charge rate. So they are well within the potential charge rate of 25 amps for their particular batteries. Most people are going to be perfectly fine charging their normal 2200 milliamp three cells at a 2C charge rate which is going to be 4.4 amps. Uh, that's going to get the, the battery topped off a little quicker than charging at a 1C charge rate and help to get you back in the air. Uh, a quick note on voltage per cell for any LiPo no matter the size if it's 2200 milliamps up to 16,000 or greater is you never want to go lower than 3.3 volts per cell or you may damage the battery and you never want to charge it more than 4.2 volts per cell. So when these guys are topped off this 2200 milliamp 3 cell, the, the milliamp size of the battery, it, it, that really doesn't matter. You're looking at the voltage of the battery. The voltage per cell should not be more than 4.2 volts per cell. So with our 3 cell here, we should not read more than 12.6 volts. And as we progress through this pack, it may start off at 12.5 to 12.6 volts per cell. Uh, that first volt or so is going to sag quickly under load, and then we're going to see a plateau. And the battery should hold near 11.23 or 1, depending on the battery. And uh, it should hold there for the duration of the LiPo. That's why these are great as opposed to some of the nickel metal. And then once you get near the end of that pack, once we burn about 80% of the battery, you're going to see it, the voltage start to drop off again. It's going to drop off very quickly. It's going to drop down 10.9, uh, 10.8, and usually by then you need to get ready to land because that's going to be near 3.4 and a half volts per cell. And like I said, you don't want to go below 3.3, otherwise 
you risk damaging the battery. And we don't want to damage our batteries. And we don't want to have any of them fail. If you drop the voltage down too low, they could potentially fail. Okay, so we've covered a lot of information so far. We've talked about how to calculate your uh, constant potential amp draw for a particular battery. We've talked about what the two different C ratings mean and how you can utilize them. Uh, we, we talked about voltage per cells on the topped off end and on the low end. And we're going to touch really quickly on storing of batteries. So lots of people want to know how long you can leave a LiPo fully charged. Well, there's not a good answer for that one. There again are lots of opinions, but no real answers. A good rule of thumb that we use is we try not to leave a battery fully charged for more than a week or two. The rest of the time, hours stay in storage mode. Uh, most chargers will have a storage mode to bring your batteries either up or down to 50 to, to, or 60%, uh, right around there. Um, so you can see on this high tag that we have several different modes and we go over to storage, LiPo storage. Uh, it will either charge or discharge your battery at one amp on three cells. So if we take our 2200 milliamp three cell and we, we plug it in and put it on storage mode, it's either going to bring it up or reduce it down to 50 to 60 percent. And we go ahead and we plug this in to our battery tester. And we can see that this battery is currently at 11 and a half volts and 53 percent. So this guy can stay at this this level for a long period of time and not be damaged. Uh, what you run into by leaving them charged up for a long period of time, they can puff and they will increase the internal resistance and they will not be able to hold a charge as long. And if you leave and the same thing, if you leave them completely depleted, uh, they may not puff, but the chemistry in the battery is not going to allow it to hold uh, its good plateau charge for a long time. So you, you start out at a higher voltage, like we said, 12.6 volts for this uh, 22 milliamp three cell. It's going to drop down to 11 and a half to 11.1 .1 and hold there until it gets on the lower half of the battery and starts to come off that plateau. All right, so let's get some flying in. We're going to start out by flying this Taro 650. This thing has 390 kV multi-star motors with 15 inch wooden props. We're going to use this aircraft in this configuration throughout the duration of these next couple of flights going over the batteries. What we're going to do is start out with this 5000 milliamp four cell zippy with a 25C rating and then we're going to fly this 5450 max amp with 120C C rating and what you're going to see is that this much more expensive battery is going to perform better. Now yet yeah, the max amp does have a few more milliamps but you're going to see that the max amp holds its voltage in the optimal range a lot better and longer than the zippy will. So you're going to end up with two, three, maybe four more minutes of flight time and we're also going to compare and see our actual milliamps burned. You're going to see a more accurate number with this max amp than with the zippy. Uh, we're going to check that by flying with a watt meter. What this is going to allow us to do is to constantly monitor during the flight the milliamps burned and the voltage per cell. Then we're going to step up, we're going to fly another zippy, another 5000 milliamp zippy, but we're going to step up the voltage to six cells. And what you're going to see then is, of course, an increased flight performance because we're going to be turning these blades at a higher RPM. But you're going to see that we're going to end up getting even better flight times out of a six cell setup than we were with the four cells. So we're going to pack up and head to the field. Okay, so the first battery we're going to fly is the 5000 milliamp Zippy four cell with a 25C rating. Okay, 
as you can see we flew that battery for nine minutes and 27 seconds with a constant voltage at landing under load of 13.7 volts our milliamps burned is 3031 okay this battery is the max amps 5450 on four cells with a 120 C C rating Okay, so that was our max amp 5454 cell at 120 C, and we got a very respectable flight time of 16 minutes and 40 seconds. So, the last battery we're going to fly today is going to be the six cell Zippy 5000 milliamp uh, with a 25 C rating. Okay, our time with the six cell is 17 minutes and 19 seconds. Our milliamps burned. 42.29. Again, we covered a lot of information in this video, and as we said before, all of the battery specs, the formulas, the aircraft specs, all that stuff you can find in the description. Um, we made this video in hopes that we could save you a little time, heartache, and hopefully some money and help you figure out the best battery for your aircraft and the way you fly. And if you have any comments, questions about anything you saw in the video, please put them in, in the comments section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you have any ideas about future videos we can do or if you have questions about motors or something like that, Put them down there in the comments and we'll see what we can do to try and get a video made or an article or something to get back to you with. Uh, again, this is Kevin with AGL. We really appreciate you checking us out. Make sure to like, subscri subscribe, and share our video. Check us out on Facebook. And uh, thanks for watching. I was curious. Right. You should be.